A 44 years old youth is the new president of Senegal as I speak. While in Nigeria, a 50 years old man at Chagodisiawo is shaking table on Twitter. Let me paraphrase. In Senegal, a 44 years old youth was able to convince people to vote for him to be the president of Senegal as he embodies the real change and accountability to lead Senegal. While in Nigeria, a 50 years old overgrown baby boy is on Twitter shaking table and cheers. They call him table shaker. A 44 years old is going to lead millions of Senegalese as their president. He was able to tell them reasons why they should vote for him and they actually voted. In Nigeria, an overgrown baby boy is on Twitter shaking table and cheer. Every day he is shaking table. They call him table shaker. This life is the word. Extraordinary. Every day. The life no just balance. Is it that Nigeria is under a curse or a spell? Where other presidents stand, he will stand. While another one is on Twitter shaking table, shaking seats, gossiping. Ha! Chasing clouds on social media. God forbid. This is God forbid. God forbid. Nigeria is under a spell. Under a spell. A man with gray hair. An elderly person with gray hair is shaking table. And a young man like this is going to stand and be speaking as the number one citizen. A big congratulations to Senegal for producing the youngest president, not just in Senegal, but in West Africa, and not just in West Africa, but the whole of Africa. Senegal is leading while the others are following. Mm -hmm. Nigeria wish to be like Senegal now, but if wishes, we are horses. I am very delighted to announce to you all that Senegal is now the latest giant of Africa. While they continue leading, others are peeping, lacking behind, confusion. Why Senegal is leading? Other countries, especially Nigeria, are in confusion. I know you are wondering, why is Senegal the new giant of Africa? When did that one start? Any country that can democratically elect their president without rigging, without technical glitch, without snatch it, grab it and run away with it, without the docility of the people, that country deserves to be called the giant of Africa. Not just the giant of Africa I can do better, the Iroko of Africa. A country that stands out. Odobu, that is what Senegal is. If you don't like it, go to court. The brand new president of Senegal was born in 1980. A 44 years old man that came out from prison to become the president. Can you beat that? Can you imagine that? It is only in Senegal that a youth can come out of prison to become a brand new president. But in Nigeria, once you come out of prison, you will start choosing your career in kidnapping, snatching of ballot box, pickpocket, and abiru. Senegal leads while others follow. The peace of mind Senegalese are experiencing today can never be replicated in Nigeria. Nigeria can only have it happen in their imaginations. All of you are now envying Senegal because you want what is happening in Senegal to at least happen in Nigeria. Can we just have real change in Nigeria? When will this Nigeria have some, some level of transparency, like equity, equality, justice, all these things, I'm tired. You just want what is happening in Senegal to be somehow replicated in Nigeria. You just want a photocopy, like a photocopy. You want Nigeria to breathe. When can we see this kind of change? It can only happen with resilience and sacrifice. Sacrifice a little and enjoy forever. You think Senegalese just woke up and have a 44 years old chassis president? No, they sacrificed. Senegalese sacrificed. You did not ask how they managed to get their president. You did not 
as in like try to ask or make research how Senegal come about having a 44 years old young boy, young man to become their president. But in Nigeria, instead of you to be looking for how you, you can make a change in Nigeria, you are shouting Muslim, Muslim ticket. Muslim, Muslim. It's Muslim, Muslim. Make sacrifices, suffer a little and enjoy forever. You will start saying, I am a Christian, I am a Muslim. A Muslim can never vote a Christian. If it is not Muslim, Muslim's ticket, we are not going to vote. Now Muslim, or if not be Muslim, we will not go vote. Oh no, this person, oh, not be my tribe man now. How will I do it? You cannot sacrifice. That is why I said, whatever is happening in Senegal and every other African country in Africa can only end in your imagination. Nigeria can never get a change with the mindset of people dwelling in Nigeria. Hmm? No, this man, he did not come from my side, though. It's not my tribe, man. I know he's good, though. He actually sound well. It's very coherent enough. But he's not my tribal person. I me and him, we are not going, we don't worship in the same mocks. He's not a Muslim. How can I vote for somebody that is not Muslim? Eh? Oh, this person is sounding well. This person, but this, this is my religion and tribe thing. How can I do it? Hmm? This is the person that fits me to let me just try and know if this person can be good. Ah, but now, this is not doing a lack of now. He's not a lack of man. How do we do this thing? Yesterday, when we went to the mocks, when we went to the mocks yesterday, our imam said we are only voting for a Muslim man, Muslim man from the north. Hmm? A core Muslim man. Hey! Oh, but if you leave me, or left for me, or if it is not this religion and tribe that have chained me and chained my heart, I will go for I will go for somebody. This person that is sounding reasonable, because this person, ah, this one that is even sounding like an imbe, eh? how am I? How do you want me to? Nah, eh? how, how God, this this religion is really chaining me. It has really chained me. This is who I'm supposed to vote for, eh? How am I supposed to vote for this kind person when there is this person? Ha! Religion, oh, tribe, 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 I've kept me in this bondage. Eh? And this man, he doesn't drink for her. He doesn't drink for her. And he doesn't eat kuo He doesn't know. He doesn't eat kuo. That man eats kuo masara. You people should ask whether that man eats kuo masara. Does he eat, does he eat me and kuka with us? He doesn't. Oh, that's the problem. I wish he is this person that eats kuo masara. And he also do Allah, wakabara, Allah, wakabara. He could have helped me to vote for him. That is what is holding Nigeria. That is why you can never get it right. The Senegalese, I beg your pardon, did not think about all these things. They sacrificed. They shone anything that is going to form come as a hindrance. Any type of coercion or any type of, you know, trying to convince them against their wish. They did not allow anything to be a stumbling block in their way. They pushed and went for what? A 44 years old president that promised them a lot somebody that is still you know his brain is still sharp and active at least with the recent thing or technology we have this one know what is going on in the world not the one you will come and be explaining when you tell him something you start doing sign language because you don't say shanta model you know what i mean you can't be like senegal you can never be like that not with the present nigeria we have today I am very, very proud of Senegal because for once they will not have a president that is wearing pampas. A president that is putting on pampas. There is one that went for a conference. He was even fatter. If they ask him question, he will mess. They ask him, uh, okay, President, you are messing in public. He will say, are you serious? He did not even know when fat, when fat is releasing, when fat is moving. This is president of Africa. I think that should be Paul Bia of Cameroon. He mess in public. All put on a public on a new sign. Ancient and modern men that wear pampas. So I am happy that Senegal had to elect a president that they will not have every minute of the day. They will be changing pampas. Sometimes you leave this seat for young people. I thought they said that the youth are the future of the next generation. Future of tomorrow, leaders of tomorrow, right? So, are you not happy that Senegal will have to save money for Pampas and save money for Nani, elderly men that are supposed to be at home 
and children or their house help will be taking care of them. This one, they said they want to, they want to be the president of millions of people when they know they don't have anything to offer. They know they have nothing to give to anybody, but they just want to be president because of too much hunger for power. So, uh, Senegal, I am happy that you people will have to save money. You don't have to wear anybody pampas. Nobody will have to be urinating anyhow. Nobody will have to be doing sign language because he is not coherent. He doesn't know what he is saying. I am happy for you people. We can only sit down and wish we are you, but we, are, we can never be you. We can never be you. So we can never be you because we give up easily. We can never be you. We wait for manna to fall from above. We can never be you because we want everything on a platter of gold. In summary, Alahaji Atiku Abubakar is concerned about the condition Nigeria has found herself, which he is also part of. So he is calling opposition parties to come together under one umbrella to defeat APC. In his opinion, without a coalition, it will be mission impossible to chase clueless APC he once supported from power. He wants you all to take inspiration from Senegal and do the needful as soon as possible. He wants young Nigerians to tap from the drum of freedom that is already beating in Senegal and some African countries to save Nigeria from her state of moribund. I have a question for Atiku Abubakar. Is he aware that the people that once advocated for him in the last general election are now on Twitter embarrassing themselves and fighting for crumbs? Alhaji Atiku Abubakar wants to chase APC from power with the help of young people, right? Is he also aware that Daniel Buala, a young man who championed his cause, is now washing and licking plates for APC in order to navigate the hardship facing Nigeria? Is he also aware that the table shaker on X who sang his praises is now a town crier for that same APC? Is Atiku Abubakar genuinely concerned for Nigerians or is he seeking an avenue to cling on to power again? It is really unfortunate that other African countries have taken real actions, visible actions, laudable actions to rewire or rewrite their history wrongfully written by the white supremacy. Why Nigerians, instead of towing the same path that leads to freedom, have all succumbed to fasting and praying to fight Northern oligarchy and Fulani hegemony that has kept everyone captive. We will continue hoping it doesn't get late before you all realize that the mess you are in now is irreversible and incurable. As you continue closing your eyes to fast and pray, the thieves steal your common wealth. You will open your eyes to find nothing. May God help us all. Thank you for watching.